it was months that I was going through postpartum, going through like the depression, crying for hours every single day, not talking to people, isolating. Mm. And then I literally, it was June 2021. I started therapy two weeks after I found my mentor, started my program. So all of these things usually happen kind of like in the same month for me. Uh, but it was through that I feel like I had to really do a lot of inner work into like life and what makes me happy. Welcome to Mindset Mastery with Julissa Edwards, the podcast dedicated to helping high performers unlock their true potential and cultivate a powerful mindset for success. I'm your host, Julissa Edwards, a mindset coach and advocate for healthy high performance. Join me on this transformative journey as we delve into strategies, insights, and inspiring conversations with experts and thriving high performers. Get ready to master your mindset, elevate your performance, and create a life of purpose and fulfillment. Let's dive in. It's on the way. It's going to be okay. I want, I have to break that apart even more because that's such a winner's mindset. And I want to help people really understand what it is that allowed you to get there. So what I'm hearing is that you have a strong intuition. It's like a tiny little voice in the back because you are fearful, but you're still moving in fear, which is what a leader does. Right. But what we're hearing is that your little voice of intuition is like, girl, don't you see it always works out for us. Mm -hmm. Right. And so my thing is that most people may, if they're, if they have, like, it's like, we all have that, but some of us have so much trauma and inner work and just like blockages that we really can't hear. So you're at least getting a whisper that then gets louder and louder because you're, you've allowed it to get louder and louder so much so that you mm-hmm. go with the path of faith, right. Yeah. And the path of believing in yourself. But a lot of people can't do that. A lot yeah. of people's fear is so loud and it's so funny because it's not to say that our fear isn't loud or that your fear is it's, it's there. It's very much there, mm-hmm. but there's something else happening that allows you to pick trust. Can you give us more insight into what that is? And feel mm-hmm. free to bring because it sounds like you're very spiritual. Yeah. So I feel like there's a few reasons I've like gotten this way. So before we can rewind, before I even started my business entrepreneurship journey my cousin actually passed away in march 2021 very tragically her life was taken from her so that situation sent me honestly in a spiral sent me through yeah it was like it was crazy and even now i'm still in therapy but it was months that i was going through postpartum going through like the depression crying for hours every single day, not talking to people, isolating. Mm. And then I literally, it was June, 2021. I started therapy two weeks after I found my mentor, started my program. So all of these things usually happen kind of like in the same month for me. Uh, But it was through that, I feel like I had to really do a lot of inner work into like life and what makes me happy and anger and, um, just like, what are we here for? What is our purpose? Why did this happen? And like, just healing from that, because it's like, uh, people sometimes they're like, Oh, it gets better in time, whatever. No, it doesn't get better in time. You learn Mm -hmm. to live with the pain, you learn how to alchemize the pain, you learn how to turn it into something very dark and nasty and horrible. But you learn to make it into something beautiful. And I feel like, the last, because it's about to be three years and this March, but I feel like wow. that situation changed my entire outlook on life. And it, t- it changed my entire outlook on what do I want for myself? How do I want to live this life with the people I want to be around, the things I want to invest my time in? Uh, what do I want to do for my kids with my kids? I feel like that made me realize that there's there's so much more to life and there's so much more to connection and people than what people think it is. So Mm -hmm. I feel like it was from that, that I had to do a lot of inner work, a lot of shadow work, a lot of dark days sitting with myself about like, why are you so angry? Why are you so upset? Why are you all these things? And then it's like, well, how is it going to be beneficial to my children? If I'm here crying for hours locked in the bathroom and they're inside the crib. Cause that's what was happening. I would cry for hours, hours in the bathroom. My son will be inside the crib. Uh, my partner will be at work. 
he would come home and I'm good. I'm I'm good. Uh, oh, dinner. Oh, watch a movie as a family. Oh, nobody knew I was that depressed. Nobody because it was wow. just like, oh, like eventually it'll go away. But then it didn't. So that's when I had to figure out I got to go to therapy. I got to go to something. Something needs to change. Like I can't do this no more. Mm. I'm not a naturally depressed person. I never been. I just never thought someone can cry for, for months. Like yeah. literally months. And I remember those days and then people would call me throughout the day. I wouldn't answer. And then I'm just thinking, wow, I spent weeks in the bathroom and my son is just watching TV. You know what I mean? So it's like, what type of mother is that? I needed to heal myself. I needed to take care of myself. And then it's like, I needed to actually trust what I was doing and then just quiet the noise. Because if I was to listen to everybody else, then I wouldn't be where I am today. Literally, I wouldn't. So I feel like it was a lot of going through like that healing, going through the grief, trying to figure out the purpose of life, the happiness, what is real happiness? You know what I mean? Because I would think, oh man, like this person took her life. So if he's gone or if he goes to prison for the rest of his life or whatever, I'll be happy because that's justice. And then I'm like, that's not going to make me happy. Mm -hmm. I, it, that's an illusion of, of what will make me happy and society happy. I don't care what yeah. happens because yeah. she's gone. That's it. It's not going to change my reality. So I feel like I took that and looked at every aspect of my life. Like what will actually make you happy? Is yeah. that like you just want bad on someone else or you just want good on someone else? Or like, what about me? What is that going to do for me? Is that going to change the reality of my situation? Mm -hmm. And it was like, no. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, okay, I need to, stop looking and going even stop going to the court dates i stopped going to the court dates i felt wow. guilty about it but yeah, i had to tell myself like i remember i was pregnant with my daughter I went to the court see this person in the courtroom and it's kind of like that this is not good for my mental i have to stay i have to step back i'm about to bring a new life i i can't carry all this anger so i felt like i had to let go of a lot a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and really think about like what do i want uh, how am I going to trust just the whole what's happening here in this world, you know, mm -hmm. but I have to really, it took a lot of, a lot of work, but I feel like mm -hmm. with that, I got so much, so much like a better relationship with myself spiritually that I'm like, Imani is fine. You can't, it's not, it's, it's a bunch of good in this world, but there's also a lot of evil. And then mm -hmm. it made me think when I was bringing kids into the world, I'm just like, this is scary. This is so scary. But then it made me realize I want to be more present for them. I have to teach them different things about life, about people, about be mindful and to trust yourself. It was like so many lessons I was learning about like, what is a mother supposed to do for her children when like, there's a scary world out there. That's the reality of it. But what can I control in this house and how can I make sure my children aren't going outside the world fearful, but they're, they're also very aware, self-aware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have high self-esteem. They are very confident. And I feel like those are the main things that I saw are, are issues that like a lot of children aren't, they're not, they don't get the, what they need at home. They, they don't have the present parent. They don't have like the love. They don't have self-esteem or confidence. And yeah. a lot of people I meet, their parents are like their first bullies. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this mm -hmm. is craziness, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. it made me just realize like, it's the big responsibility to raise little to humans. To raise children. To oh, raise God. children, yeah. But I needed to, for sure, make sure I was, I was patched up. I was patched yeah. up. I was good. Um, I mean, before you, everything. girl, I'm so proud of you. Like, Thank I you. haven't <laughs> known you for that long. I'm just, you're doing such immense inner work. Thank you. And it's not that it, it's been easy, but you're handling it so swiftly. Like, mm -hmm. it's like a lot was being thrown at you and you just took the time to do the hard thing, which was to sit in stillness and mm -hmm. figure out, you know, I talk about this a lot. My biggest, I talk about the, my, maybe like two episodes prior to this one, um, I speak about how money was my biggest lesson in 2023 and my attachment to money just being another form of my anxiety and yeah. giving these false illusions of safety, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And I love your story because you met like with the whole, um, you know, if the guy that that killed my my cousin goes to jail, then I'll feel good. It's like, no, that's mm -hmm. that's a per that's a perceived safety feeling that like if he's locked up, then I'll feel okay. Then all will mm -hmm. be well because the truth is, is that I'm dying inside. I'm mm -hmm. I'm very much heartbroken over this, and I I just miss her. 
you mm-hmm. know? And so being able to sit with that, it's the realness in the rawness. And meeting that to me is also mm-hmm. inner child healing. It's like healing. You're you're being so honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. Right? And so you the ability for us to do that, it's it's a blessing because it gets us out. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people will have a hard time getting to the real truth because even though we're doing the inner work, like we might be going to therapy or coaching, whatever it is that you're doing, and I commend everybody for doing it. But it mm. takes sometimes a long time to get to the real root of truth. Mm. And you continue to meet yourself at those truth moments time and time again, allowing you to, where we began, Classic. choosing faith over fear. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, damn girl, we have so many points to talk about. You keep talking and I'm like, oh, that, yes, that, let's talk about that. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> let's see. I think I want to take the conversation. You mentioned at the end of this last talk that you were just having that the realization that being a mother, being a parent is so critical. And that's such a blanket statement. So let me break it down. Critical because we're seeing that, yes, most of people, humans, adults' issues are stemming from their childhood. We know that. Like, I feel like people know that by now, right? Like, yeah. if you're listening to this, mm-hmm. you know that by now. It's what I preach my work about. Like, it's what a lot of people yeah. are preaching their work around. Like, you know this. We know this. And then we're seeing how, like, yes, like, a lot of our... I left when you said that. It was very true. A lot of our first bullies were definitely our parents. Some, mm-hmm. you know, worse than others, but it was unknowingly for the most part right? It was all of our parents um, and anyone for this matter, but like all of this adult's woundings that they never got to process, that they never had the privilege of processing, that they never had the insight to process, just being spewed out into the next generation, right? And, And so on and so forth. And so this idea of being the best for our children is, is really committing to the inner work to being the best for ourselves, Right. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not and it's not saying that we we can be fixed, like there's something wrong with us. This is a continuous journey of healing and evolution. But all that we've learned in life as children have been projections from other people. Some great, some not so great. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about Mm -hmm. culture, influence, um, the school that you went to, like all of that plays a part into who you are as a person today as an adult. Right. And whatever those core um, beliefs or memories or subjective feelings about certain things were, like take trauma, for example, any, any, and that's a, that's a very large spectrum of what can happen to you that can be considered as trauma, but trauma in the way that you respond to it moving forward, X thing happened in your life. And then Mm -hmm. you took a perspective on that incident. And that perspective has now living with you and also takes complete reign of how you respond to anything moving forward in life that Mm -hmm. resembles that original traumatic incident without you knowing it, right? So it's really this act of even, I always say like, as much as I know about the field of psychology and who I am as a person and the things that I do for my clients, like I know hella knowledge. It, I love it. It lights up my soul. Mm-hmm. I think humans are so intriguing. I love human beings for all that we go through and all that we continue to persevere and up level. And I love, I love that. I love this conversation <laughs> hearing your story. So I, and I'm saying all that to say, I am still blinded in my own journeys, in my own discoveries, right? I'm still, dev- I'm heavily devoted to my own inner growth. Right. And so it's like, why am I saying all this? The to be a parent is to have complete and full influence on how this person perceives life. Mm-hmm. And we can complicate it by thinking that we have to do the most. But I loved what you said too about like, mm-hmm. my children are confident, they're kind, right? Just these simple things that we can be there as their biggest supporters. I'll say this too, and maybe, and I'll have you chime in here. Not parents believing that like we have to do everything versus like, okay, we're really just the soil. 
We want to provide really good, nutritious foundation so they can Mm -hmm. grow and prosper in their own ways. We don't have control over that, but Mm -hmm. I want to have good and rich soil for them. So how has that come up for you and connecting it maybe to entrepreneurship because it's the same kind of thing, right? Um, How does that land for you? I feel like with that, it's definitely one of those things that when I am thinking of how I want my children to be raised, I always think about one, how I was raised and how, because times have changed so much that what I thought I would be doing at this age and what I will have at this age, it's com- it's completely different, right? Mm-hmm. So I feel like now when I look at my children, I'm just like, I feel like also, let me backtrack. When a child is born, I feel, whether it's a boy, girl, people look at the child and they have all these expectations. They're going to say, okay, I have my son. He's going to be a basketball player. He's going to be a football player. He's going to be a little boxer, swimmer, whatever. I have my daughter. She's probably going to end up being a doctor or she's going to be a veterinarian or all these things that they want for the kid. And I feel like when I see my kids now, I don't have that mentality I'm just like, hmm, I wonder what they're going to like. I see what they like now. They like water. They like animals. They're very (laughs) aware with all these little things, right? But even when it comes to like, yeah, Yeah. I love it. And they're so curious (laughs) and they're so innocent. And I look at the small things that they find joy in. Mm. And I'm just like, oh, man. like Let's do more of that. Yeah, like this is so nice, you know? And even when it comes to, you know, I don't have uh, my daughter in a daycare right now. I probably get to homeschool my kids in some type of capacity, right? So I see a lot of people that it's like, but this is how you have to do it. This is how you have to teach children. This is how you have to have a job and this. And now it's just like, hmm, we, we don't have to do that though. We my kids don't have to learn that way. They actually don't like learning that way. So why do we have to conform to all these things? So I feel like with the children, it's like, well, I just want them to be, they get to grow into who they get to grow to, but I want them to realize that through me, look, anything is possible. You can actually create whatever you want. You know, you can actually, if you don't like, you know, the system of the college and the this and the that, which I love school. You know what I mean? I'm actually going back to school uh, to become an autism therapist. I don't know if I told you about that. No. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm going to be opening my second business. Um, it's going to be oh. um, yeah, a therapy company for kids with autism. But that's why I got to go back to school. So that's okay. another conversation. But yeah, so I don't knock the college thing. But I do see that if you can go to school, get your bachelor's, your master's, your licenses, whatever, and start your own business or be an entrepreneur, because that's who I am in my heart, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to do that. I want my kids to do that. And I think that you learn a lot from college. But I also feel like we don't have to have this pressure. Like Mm -hmm. if my son grows up and he's like, you know, mom, I just want to work at the, the horse stables. Or I want to take care of horses all day. I want to ride the horses all day. Mm -hmm. He can do that. But I also know that he'll be able to do that because of the things I'll have set up for him financially and physically Mm -hmm. so that he doesn't have to worry about, well, I need to work all of this so that I can retire with this much money and I need all of this. And it's like, no. My kids could, like, I already have it in my head that they can decide what they want to do. They can work for my companies or they can create their own or they, whatever, you know, but it's really a beautiful place to be in when you say like, you, I just want you to be happy. I want you to be confident. I want you to know so much about the world and see, know so much about people and learn and, and just, just have the time to see the things that I couldn't see at that age because you know, we were in the system. But now that I'm like, okay, when it comes to business, I just, you know, I had spoke to you briefly when I said, you know, I was looking at the different schools from my son and there's schools that Mm -hmm. are like, you know, in New York, the specialized autism ones, they're like 70,000 to a hundred thousand. And I'm like, man, 70,000. That's some people will say that's a lot of money. And I'm Mm -hmm. just like, 
but in my head, I can create something that can generate that 7,000. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I can say, you know what, maybe we cut that in half and I use 35,000. I'll homeschool him, hire some special education, private teachers. We'll have equestrian classes. We'll have swim classes. I'll take him to all these different things and I can just cut half the money and honestly do our own thing, but he'll still be learning and in our own way in a in a different really cool way but it's like nice mm-hmm. that i'm able to even say that i can switch things i can like it's no strict rigid type of thing it's like i can literally create whatever i want for my life and my kids life so it's a nice yeah. place to be it's definitely a it's nice, a place, very to nice be. place to be what mm-hmm. i'm hearing is that you trust yourself mm-hmm. when you trust yourself there's no rush When we're rushing in life is because we feel like we're either competing, we're not where we're supposed to be. We don't trust something. Something doesn't feel aligned. So we're like, there's this anxiety of like, this is not enough. I'm not doing it the right way. There's there's a lack of trust, which I always teach. It's like, for me, the biggest indicator of anxiety, how much do you trust yourself? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you had trust, there would be no fear. Whatever you combat, you'll be able to, you'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what, what I love two things. Yes, you're moving through, you have this expansiveness in the way that you think. To me, it is a mind of an entrepreneur, or I think, I think the mind of a successful entrepreneur, because there's no limits, there's no cap. It's just like, oh, this thing costs 75K, I can generate that, because you can, Mm -hmm. right? We're looking at a life of where, I mean, it's, I can hear this in so many different ways. We're looking at a life where, where we really believe that anything is possible, and whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter because I believe it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you and know a lot I mean? of people look at me kind of like. <laughs> like we're crazy. I'm delusional. Yeah. And oh, I'm like. Girl. Oh, I know. I'm like, oh, okay. Trust and believe. I know. And to me, it's like. It. Yeah. Like it doesn't. But I don't need you to get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like. And I'm not saying this in a really rude way. I. So I do a lot with like. I like looking at things through the lens of spirituality and science. I'm a science girl through and through. You know, I came to this field or, you know, the profession of coaching because I was originally a licensed psychotherapist, still am, right? But everything I did was very clinical, very black and white. This is science, this is the way that it goes, this is the way the brain works. Like, it was very, like, there's no question, there's no room for question here. This is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. And um, when it comes to spirituality, there's so much overlap. So, like, you know, for, like, let's say manifestation, um, or like law, of, let's say law of attraction. Um, you know, you think about red cars and when you go outside, you're going to see more red cars. Right. And it was like, oh, well, that's just because you're thinking about it. So now it's on the forefront of your, of your consciousness. And I'm like, yeah. absolutely. Yes, yeah. that is true. And I'm also attracting the red cars to me at the same time mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. yes, because I am thinking about them. So you have a choice. Do you want to yeah. live your life that things are not going to work out for you? Because you can very much create that reality. Yep. Or do you want to live a life where anything that you desire, you attract towards you? Because that is also a reality. Both exist. Yep. And I would even argue that in our t- lives today, right now, even though, even with our successes in our business, I could very much tell you about all the bad. That's a truth of mine yeah. too, but I mm-hmm. choose to focus on the good. And I don't yeah. say that I'm not in La La Land where I don't think bad things happen to people and to me. I went yeah. through a whole slew of shit in 2023, you yeah. know, but even with all the crap, I probably had one of the best years of my life with my family. At the end, mm-hmm. and it's, it's the truth. It's my truth. If somebody else was in my body, they could probably think differently. Yeah. But it's my truth and it's what allows yeah. me to keep going. And I believe that I have this, I always say this quote to my clients, the deeper the dive, the higher we rise. I oh do God. believe that with greatness comes great lows. There's like a barometer and it's like, like well, if you want to go all the way up here, you got to be willing to sink all the way down here too for equality and equilibrium like it just Mm. sometimes happens and it's Mm. not the like waiting for the shoe to drop kind of feeling i get that too i definitely feel that way sometimes too when things are going really well i'm like fuck when is it gonna stop you know um but it's not when when i'm in this spiritual like peaceful place of of knowing the ups and downs it's like 
I have to be able to hold my breath in this low of water in order to celebrate in this high of elevation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I, my my vessel, my body has to be able to hold both. And so I welcome both. But if I want to keep going higher and mm-hmm. higher and higher, I have to put more energy on the good. Have to. Mm-hmm. Or else I can't hold space for everything else that's going to come. And if I only hold space for the negative, I'm just going to get deeper and deeper into the waters and never mm-hmm. come up for air. Yep. Yep. That's literally honestly, I feel like that's also why. I'm very mindful who I have conversations with now, like more than ever before. I feel like last year, well, the beginning of the last year, because at the end of last year, I made sure I was like, we can't do this anymore. A lot of people would come to me and, you know, I don't mind people venting to me, right? Like friendships, family, but then I'm a very solution based person. So I would say, okay, so what's the solution here? Yes. What are we doing? Because we are going in circles, you know? So I felt like when a lot of people would come and come and come and it's like kind of just dumping all of this on me. I used to say, but it's like, I don't subscribe to that. I really don't believe any of those things. And to sit here and constantly either wait for someone to change your reality is just not going to happen. Like I have to always tell people, even when people come to me, they want to start a business, they want to do whatever. And I say, and they tell me, a uh, thousand and one things, all the wrongs and the stuff that's been happening in their life, whatever it is. And I have to tell them respectfully, nobody cares. <laughs> no one is going to, you know, um, help you out or purchase from you or invest in you or work with you because of your sad story. Everybody has one. Mm-hmm. Everyone has a sad story. So for you to sit there, you can sit there and complain and complain and say, oh, well, it's me 24 seven, but that's literally gonna just keep you there. You're not gonna do anything. So that's why I'm a very action-based, like, oh, hey, like when my friends come to me, I'm like, hey, let's do this, 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 and this. And they're like, are you sure? I'm like, listen, if you don't try to fix or do anything, you're gonna stay in the same place. And we're staying here, yes. Yeah, and that's why I'm like, I don't even allow when people start saying, oh, but but this could happen and but this could happen. I'm just like, why do people think like that? Like, I, I think sometimes, oh, maybe something bad's going to happen. But now, even in my head, I'm just like, is it a bad thing? Or is it like calling for me to just like pause and stop and reflect and reset? Like, is this what it's telling me? Or is mm-hmm. it just like everything's happening to me and not for me? It's like, no, it, it's happening for me. It's something's being shifted here for a reason. And even though it sucks and I don't like it and the human part of me is just like, what's, you know, panic mode, like internally, it's like, this is happening. It's going to be okay. We're going to be fine. But now I don't even like listen to what other people have to say, or I don't even listen to, I don't even allow the conversations like that on my phone anymore. (laughs) I'm like, listen, I want to just speak all the, like when you come to me, please let's speak in solutions. I don't mind you venting, but at the end of that vent, I'm going to need for you to to tell me what you thought of we'll that you can change the situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes mm-hmm. people, they don't want to, they don't want to hear that. Sometimes a lot of people, they just want to sit in it and you can sit in it as long as you want, but nothing's going to happen. You can literally keep going down the rabbit hole. And that's, that's a place I refuse to go to. <laughs> okay. That's why I'm yeah. very mindful of even the people I work with. If there's like entrepreneurs that are, whether it's collaborating or I'm working for them and they, they want to sit on the Zoom call and they're just like, oh, it's just never going to work out. Oh, I don't know. I'm not getting business. I'm not getting mm. this and nothing's budging. And it's oh my, oh my goodness, we need to have a mental reset <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because this is not good. You know what I mean? Like you're going to be attracting all of that into the business. You got to, you got to get it together. Mm-hmm. Go to the park, go away for the weekend, go camping, hug a tree no. or two or three. <laughs> yeah. I literally, when I tell people, my friends, I literally tell them, go to the park. I, I don't got time to go to, the, that's exactly why you are where you are. You don't got time to go to the park, go to the park. And they're like, what am I supposed to do there? I got my headphones, take off your headphones and listen, just sit. Mm-hmm. And people really think I'm kind of like bugged out. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. I'll sit by a tree for hours and not speak to anyone. And then I'll come back decompressed and I'll be okay. I was like, some of you really have to just sit with yourself and speak, just speak out loud. Literally. Mm-hmm. That's what I do more than half the week. I'm doing that speaking to myself. and like talking just in my own head. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so um, I wanted to bring up so a couple of points, and then I'm going to get us to um, another section of the episode. So one of the things that you said to a girl, I got to take notes because like you just it, there's just so much to talk about. But this one is really important. Um, you said that you wanted to allow your kid to just be. We started talking about this trust within self and like how the most important thing that is for you at this time is just I want my children to just be right no agenda just exploration mm-hmm. of self and doing whatever it is that makes you happy we'll do more of that right you know just bringing it full circle so much of our problems today in this world is that we never had a chance to be we're doing so much work to find mm-hmm. ourselves again to what it for what it is for us to just be like going to the park and just sitting it's like yeah we have to do those things now because we don't know who the f we are anymore mm-hmm. we haven't had a chance to process and get in touch with ourselves and all the things so you doing that for your children is the greatest medicine that you could give them. And it's, mm-hmm. it, it's beautiful. So I'll say this girly. What, um, thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing so many of your truths throughout the entire episode. Um, I think that you've been super honest, so I don't know what else can yeah. maybe come, but I'm still going to ask the question. Um, yeah. We always reserve the end of the episode for us to dig even deeper um, and share like a real adversity that's happening maybe right now that we haven't overcome or have all the answers to. Um, I think people have seen by far in many examples today that like you continue to persevere and that is in fact what's making you successful that you've had these lows. Um, Hmm. that are making you climb on top even more. So is there anything right now that you don't have the answers to um, and you're just sitting in it? Uh, I feel like right now, I think it's weird. So I feel like what I'm sitting in now is how to interact with people in person again. I feel like now I'm finally like getting out of the house, you know, mm. um, and doing stuff and saying to myself, you know, I really miss just the connection with people in person is different, but I noticed about myself, um, it's kind of, I don't want to be around people. Like I want to be around people, but I don't, I don't like being around too much. Uh, I feel like right now I'm trying to figure out how to balance uh, more time with friends and family um, because everyone seems to be very busy. A lot of people are stressed financially. A lot of people, they don't have the time or money to go out uh, and do things. So I feel like right now I'm trying to, and also I feel like a lot of people have been triggered by me doing well, um, which is very weird for me. Uh, mm-hmm. I never thought that I would get in a point in entrepreneurship where literally at the end of the year coming into the new year I lost like a handful of friends but it's because I think when people see that you're doing good and like you don't have anything to complain about it's like not a a thing we can relate on anymore I hear that or oh you think you're better than because you are making this amount of money and it's not that easy for everybody it's not that uh, I don't I don't have my own business Imani kind of thing you know so mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people wanted to like disconnect from me because the issues they're having in their life seeing me I don't have those same issues you know what I mean um, and I'm very happy but it's like if we get on the phone I don't have anything to complain about I don't have and if I give advice and you feel like it's too out of reach or it's not possible it just kind of comes to a point with a few friendships that I'm just like what's happening here where I feel like when I'm speaking to people, they don't get me. Like the mm-hmm. mindset's not the same. And, and it's very weird because when I speak to my entrepreneurship friends or people that are like, you know, the same, we've done the inner work, we've done mm-hmm. all this stuff. I think that it's just like, it wasn't necessarily like just me with the business doing well and they're upset. It was more of like, they're not at the same place as me mentally. Mm-hmm. And the stuff mm-hmm. I believe in, they feel like it's too it's, it's delusional. It's like mm-hmm. not possible even for them mm-hmm. when it's kind of mm-hmm. like, well, how am I supposed to speak to my friends truthfully mm-hmm. and my family truthfully if what I tell you, you, you tell me it's unrealistic or that's mm-hmm. not possible or that's too much or that's too much work or that's going to take years. But I'm like, you know, um, I've been in business not even three years. My business is going to make three years September. Um so it's kind of one of those things that I, I'm learning to like try to like process. But then I know a lot of people say when you start stepping into the next level, 
a lot of people are going to start dropping off. A lot mm-hmm. of things that's not aligned is just, it needs to get cleared out. And maybe people just don't want, they may not have the best intentions for you. So that needs to kind of go away. So I feel like that's definitely one of the things I'm working through now, just trying to process like my friendships with family, for a, a friendship, I mean, relationship with family and friends and like um, what I can say that's like, doesn't I don't know that doesn't trigger people it doesn't but it's also a reminder like it's it has nothing to do with me it's a yeah, projection yeah. of, of yeah. them so it's like what else can I do I'm just doing what I always do you know and if people come find me reach out to me they start to eventually understand or see what I'm saying but I think at this point in entrepreneurship and where I'm at mentally it's definitely a weird place to be when you start realizing that not everyone's going to come with you to the next level, but it's not my responsibility to bring them with me either. Um, um, and I have to set boundaries when it comes to you're asking me for money, you're asking me for favors, you're asking me for this. And, you know, um, it could be your friends that they have a full time job and no kids. And they ask in the person who's running a business and they have two kids. What's um, happening? <laughs> so it's definitely one of those things that uh, I think people, they see an online business owner and they don't think we have to work that hard. But they don't they think it's oh I work from home, it's easy. Um, and they kind of get it confused with all the behind the scenes stuff that happens. Uh, mm-hmm. so that's definitely the part of my life that I'm like kinda I don't I don't know what's happening. Um, mm-hmm. but I am I'm I'm rolling with the punches and I just kinda mm-hmm. see everything as a lot of things kinda like got left in twenty twenty three, but then it's like so much came since the new year happened that I'm like it's very weird, but I asked for all of this and I wanted all of this. So maybe this was part of what needed to be let go. So mm-hmm. it's been kind of that, like, a, I guess a grieving process, but that I don't mm-hmm. have the answer for. But I talked to a few other entrepreneur friends, even some clients, and they're like, oh, the same thing happened to me. And I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, OK, I guess this is, you no, know, I'm... you're going to trigger people when you do better, when you're doing, when you're elevating, it's natural that it will trigger people because of the stuff that they're going through you can't control it so definitely a learning a learning thing that's been weird but just still learning just a processing uh factor chapter of your life yeah um Mm -hmm. I would say it's you know not that we're doing better than them but we're just doing better for ourselves it's always the inner work right like it's our mindset is healthier our 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 whole Mm -hmm. ecosystem our internal ecosystem is just better Right. So we're vibrating differently. And um, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a little off putting sometimes. Um, It's funny. So I used to have uh, my first program that I ever did in the business was the Mind Reset program. Um, We still Mm -hmm. sell the the videos from that program because it's still fantastic information. But on the sixth part of that program, the final part was a whole video on literally what you just said. I would take clients through a six month experience of like, you know, just clearing their inner shit. Um, and you know, you start to elevate, you know, I use examples of like, you know, you're kind of just like, I always say respect of respectively, we are our own universe and everybody is just a planet orbiting around us. And we're here to learn from them, right? That they're like circling us. And some people come around a lot of times, teach us a lesson until we figure it out. And then we just elevate. And then we have other planets that surround us at that time. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I, like when, I like that. I like that way of thinking of it. <laughs> yeah. And um, when we're healing, we're just we, the, all pieces fall off. We become lighter and we become more expansive and we get higher and higher in ecosystem. Right. And but I would I, also in that literally it's module six for anyone who's purchasing. I still my mind reset bundle. It's, it's all in module six. Um, I talk about how. You're going to get to a point in life when you're healing so much and so fast that you're going, it could feel very lonely. It can feel very lonely, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have people that are on the same wavelength as you, but it's a huge remembrance, which I know, you know, but I'm just repeating it again, that like, we are not Mm -hmm. better than those other individuals, even though they are maybe complaining more or they are stuck. And I use air quotes stuck because it's their perceived belief that they're stuck right and here we are we have all this knowledge and experience and breakthroughs that have a lot us to see like you're the culprit of your own misery right like you choose whether you want to be miserable or not it's like what i was saying earlier right it's like what am i looking at well i've had both shitty and great moments i choose to focus on the great moments right Mm -hmm. and so um yeah i i always tell my clients at that part of the program i would always say something like just be humble 
um, you are, you, you, it's like a double trigger because they're getting triggered, but then you're also kind of like, what the fuck? Like, what's like, why can't you mm-hmm. think this way? You yeah, know? So yeah. I, I always just advise clients of like, and just people like, just be patient. Um, because yeah. I will say that we're like mastering or learning vigorously this world of inner healing, but we never know what other, there's many other worlds that exist, what other worlds that they're going through right now that they're mastering. And we have no insight into that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So maybe right now yeah. we don't we don't really have common points of contact or places that we can speak about. And so like, yeah, maybe that falls off for a bit. But I think like, you know, you seem like you're doing like you're just hands off, hands off at this time. What What's yeah. meant to be will be. Um, but just that humble remembrance of like, yeah, like maybe in a different lifetime, even if that's this lifetime that we come back together, but like on a different wavelength, because this wavelength right now just isn't hitting the way that it used to. And that's OK. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thousand percent. <laughs> Thank you, girly. I think this was such a enriched episode. So many things like so good. We, we talk about motherhood, a lot of stuff. <laughs> autism, healing, like, oh my God. Like letting our children just be. We spoke, we spoke about so many things. And yep. I love talking with you. I feel like again, Me we too. resonate on so many topics. And you also were such a light in this episode too. So I feel that anyone that is listening that is going through a hard time or just needs like a like a reminder of like, this is a way that you can win at life. Like this is the mindset, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, like this was the episode for that. So thank you, girly. I loved having you. you. Yeah. Do you have, um, well, I'll say this, how can individuals find you? They can find me, um, my website, my website or my Instagram. I talk a lot about, um, you know, entrepreneurship, but I do sprinkle in motherhood and grief and you know virtual assistant um like aspiring virtual assistants i have that type of information but definitely my website and my instagram is where you can find me oh i also have a podcast it's called the organized mom podcast and we talk about uh mompreneurship getting organized just real life um real life stuff yeah (laughs) so (laughs) that is where you can find me at (laughs) Yeah, beautiful. All right, girly. Well, we loved having you. Thank you so much. And we will talk very soon. Bye. Thank you for tuning into Mindset Mastery with Julissa Edwards. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to the podcast to receive future episodes packed with valuable insights. Remember to follow us on social media at the healthy.highperformer for more inspiration, tips, and updates. If you found this episode helpful, we'd appreciate it if you could share it with your network and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your support means the world to us as we continue to empower high performers like you. Until next time, keep mastering your mindset and thriving as a healthy high performer.